Welcome to Painting Made Easy with April May. I'm April May and today we're going to be painting Dakota. This is my brother's dog. It's a picture I took of her several years ago when she was just a cute little puppy. This is a great uh, painting for beginners because it has a very limited color palette and it doesn't have just a whole lot of details to get hung up on. So grab your paints and join me while we paint Dakota. Okay, so let's get started. Um, as you can see here, I have my line drawing all done, which I highly recommend unless you're just really good at drawing. Um, I always trace my image onto my canvas. That way I can be as accurate as possible. So right here I'm just uh, using Mars Black and Titanium White, a mixture to get a dark gray. And I'm just filling in the background. I'm just blocking everything in right now. I'm not concerned with brush strokes. I'm not real concerned with the color. I just need something remotely close to my finished product. And as I add layers, you know, we'll refine all of that and that detail and things like that. So this corner is just all gray. There's no, there's nothing in this corner. I know you can't see what's going on, but so now I'm getting started with the ear, just blocking in some of the highlight with a lighter gray. And it's really like I said in the beginning, the, the my main focus is just get paint on the canvas. Um, I try to try to use a mid-tone because then my shadows are going to show up later on when I add darker colors to it. They're going to show up and when I add my highlights, they will also show up when you use a mid-tone. I recommend if you're just getting started with painting, this is a pretty good one. I have a very limited color palette. It's a pretty easy subject matter. There's not a whole lot going on. And if you've never painted before or just getting new with painting, you know, my biggest suggestion is just put paint to canvas. That's the only way you're going to learn. You know, I've been painting for 20 years and I still make mistakes and that's that's just part of it and that's how you learn so I'm I remember when I first got started I would sit and I was like oh what am I gonna paint and how am I gonna do this and there was all this apprehension in the beginning and once I realized that if I just put paint to canvas and got started I got kind of in a roll and yeah I made mistakes and I made paintings that I wasn't extremely happy with but I was constantly learning you have to remember that the people that inspire you with their artwork most likely they didn't just sit down at a easel one day and start and painted a masterpiece you know it's years of practice and they themselves are probably still growing as artists like we all are the one thing about acrylics though is that if you if you screw something up or you don't like it this is such a forgiving medium that you can go back and you can fix anything you don't like and sometimes for me it may take me several you know layers of paint to kind of get it get it to where I want it and where I'm happy so we're still just kind of blocking in the colors using different tones of gray And all the paint colors 
and my paint brushes and the paint that I used, the type of canvas, is all in the description of this video. This area is one of the few areas where I just went ahead and blocked it in with black because it's the shadow between her face and her ear. So I knew there was not going to be any highlights going in there or that's as, that's as dark as I needed it to get. I just needed it to be black right there. The rest of it I didn't use solid black for anything else except for shadows. which I recommend, like I said before, you definitely want to use kind of your mid-tones for blocking in, in, mo in most cases. At least that's, that's the way I've always done it, and which has worked well for me. Painting just like with most things in life, there's multiple ways to end up with the same result. So this is just the way I paint and my style of painting that works for me. If something works for you, works better for you, then by all means do that. So when I'm blocking in the white, I didn't I didn't block in with white I blocked in with um, oh, what was it it's called um, I think it's unbleached titanium white is what it's called yes unbleached titanium white is what I used to block in the whites because I needed a, a darker color so that when I do go in and highlight on her face the white will actually show up otherwise her whole face just looks white. So I'm using the unbleached titanium white. I'm using a very light shade of, of gray. And then of course some light kind of tan beigey colors because she has little kind of freckles on her face. When I started this painting, I was in my living room, and so I didn't have my studio set up yet, so I'm just painting on a, using a paper plate to hold my paints. You don't have to buy a bunch of fancy equipment to get started painting. I use for my acrylics, I use Liquitex Basics, which I think they're around 4 or $5 a tube, 
which is a really good price. They're considered a student grade, but they're they're um, light. Their light fastness is very good, and they go on more matte instead of shiny. I really like the look, the Liquitex Basics. So I've got m most of her all blocked in with color, and now I'm starting on the eyes. Now I always tend to do the eyes first. See, I haven't even blocked in the foreground or the ground she's sitting on because I hadn't really decided what I was going to do there. But I love to do the eyes first because it brings life to the subject matter kind of instantly. placing her little spots on her on her muzzle all where they belong now I'm going back now that the paint on the eye is dry and going back and kind of lining her eyes in black adding the reflective light And just focusing more on the eye just trying to get it as realistic as possible and building up the shadows on her eyes back in her the nostrils of her nose because I had lost those when I did the blocking in now when I blocked everything in I wasn't worried about the strokes of the fur you know these were just blocked in in color now as I go in I am focusing more on creating the fur and using strokes my strokes to create the fur <clears throat> and I do that just by making little sh sh short strokes with my paintbrush so that when one color meets the other color there isn't a smooth line there's there's all these jagged lines as they meet together and that shows where the fur is it indicates the fur So here I, 
we are I'm now in my studio this would be day two I believe of painting and of course my head's gonna get in the way occasionally this was my first time ever shooting in here and I wasn't aware that my camera needed to be set at a different spot so that I don't I don't get in the way So now I'm just starting to do my blending and adding detail and some more highlights. But there's going to be several layers of paint on here. So as you can see, I'm using just short strokes to build up my shadow. Adding shadow to the fold in her ear. But I'm just, this is all comprised of just up and down vertical brush strokes of different, different lengths. Because you always, in the direction of the hair growth, you want to make sure that it's all staying true to how, how her fur actually grows. So now I'm starting to block in the foreground or the the ground she's laying on. I knew that I didn't want to do the cement color and I've decided that I'm going to do a wood, like she's laying on a wood floor. So as you can see, <laughs> this color is a hideous color. But I just wanted to get something blocked in so that I could work on the shadows underneath her. <clears throat> I just needed something down there. So now I'm starting to kind of tone down that. <clears throat> it was a yellow ochre, which just did not look good against her. Um, I actually love that the color, but it looked terrible against her. Um, so I'm adding some brown to this to kind of tone it down and to start working on the wood grain of the floor. Normally I would have blocked this in at the very beginning. I just, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. If I wanted her on carpet or uh, wood or grass or I just, I wasn't sure how, where I wanted to go with that. So I decided I would, wouldn't work on it until I've, you know, kind of got it figured out.
So here I'm just darkening up the corners even more in her body. I want a hint of her body in the background, but I want the focus to be on her face. So I'm going to darken the background up as much as possible with just a suggestion of her body being back there. It'll take several layers until I reach that, you know, the right kind of compromise between detail and and a suggested hint of her body being back there. Now I'm adding brown in that corner so that you know that she, the floor continues on back there. So I needed to add that brown in that corner. Finishing darkening up her body. I'm just darkening up that bottom edge of the painting. I'm back to working on the highlights and, well, the shadows here. You know, I'm just constantly referring to my reference photo and adding in the shadows underneath her body. I'm just using straight black for this. Right now I'm just kind of outlining it. I'll feather this all out later. So if we zoom in here, you can see I'm just using short little brush strokes. I'm not filling this all in solid. I'm using brush strokes to indicate the hair. So you're getting the mid-tone under bottom layer and then this darker layer on top. And the way the light's going to refract through that, you're going to be able to see all the layers. And it's going to add depth and dimension and texture to your to your finished painting. You definitely want to make sure that you're following the growth of her hair. And I had the by the even I made the mistake and had the hair going in the wrong direction and I had to go back and fix that. So I'm going to move to her ear and make sure to do the brush strokes. This is where I'm going to start focusing on the fur and the texture of the fur. So the remaining of the painting, most of it is going to be done in little strokes.
I am blocking in a little bit of this color and kind of ignoring the brush strokes, but as I go back in and refine it, I'm still using some brush strokes to indicate the hair. And I jump around a lot that's so that I can let the area that I'm working on dry so I just move to another area of the painting or you can use a blow dryer and blow dry it if you want to stay focused in that one spot but I like to just jump around That way I don't have to stop and get my blow dry out and I can just kind of stay focused on painting without having to worry about drying it. I'll just let it air dry. I'm using a raked brush uh, right now to do the hair. It kind of does it kind of quickly. But sometimes it'll make the hair look kind of uniform, so that's why I kind of go back and forth between this raked brush and just a standard flat brush on its edge. So as you can see, this painting has gone through, already gone through several different stages where it's looked weird, it's looked good, it's looked off, you know, the colorings have been kind of skewed, but that's all part of the process of building your layers, and defining your highlights, your lowlights, your values. It's all just part of the process. So we're coming to the conclusion of part one. Please make sure to check out part two. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the little bell so that you're notified when I upload new painting tutorials. Thank you so much. Y'all have a wonderful day.